At Wind River Resort and Casino, we like to celebrate life's little moments. Oh, and the big ones too. Because around here, when you're completely in the moment, that's when the magic happens. Come in and find your moment at Wind River Resort and Casino. Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Mike Kruger from Weather NorCal. You're watching Coffee with Kruger every weekday morning starting at 7 a.m. to help get you, your kids, everyone out the door in the morning so you know what to expect going through the day ahead. And of course, if we have anything going on over the next few days, and we do, you know, we've been talking about this, some big, big changes that are heading our way uh, as we go into tonight, we go into tomorrow, we go into really the weekend is looking like it's going to be quite an interesting weekend. Uh, we've got some rain. We've got some low elevation snow making a swing to the forecast. We've got a lot going on, folks. So tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We are going to get right into the forecast because there's a lot going on that we need to tell you about. All right, first of all, let's take a look at the satellite and watch. take a look at the storm that we are watching very closely. So we've got an area of low pressure over the Gulf of Alaska. We're already starting to see some rain on the leading edge of that storm system that's approaching the Pacific Northwest. Eventually, the radar will pick up on rain as it gets close enough for the rain that will approach us. But see that big batch of clouds, kind of that comma-shaped, that's the cold front. That's the storm system that is approaching us. Now, right now, it's going to be the calm before the storm today. I mean, if you didn't know what was going on, you would just go on with your day and go, oh, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. No. And of course, this is something I've been advertising all week long. 59 for Reading right now, 50 in Chico. Oh, the wind's still blowing a little bit out this morning in Reading. That's keeping those temperatures up a bit, but it is cold right now in Alturas at 28, 29 for Bernie. But how about Susanville? Not bad at 39, but along the coast, low to mid 40s. All right, here's what we're going to expect here for today. And we have got ourselves a pretty nice day in store for us. Uh, looks like we are going to see, let me just make sure, is everything okay? Yeah, we got, we got audio. We, <laughs> uh, temperatures in the low 80s for the valley. In fact, today is the peak of the warming trend. Today will be the warmest we've seen so far for the week. Uh, and then... Uh, the big drops in the temperatures after that, which we'll get into here in a second. Let's take a look at future cast. There is the rain approaching. I mean, even by this afternoon and evening, Del Norte County, Northern Humboldt County, even parts of Siskiyou County will be looking at some showers in advance of the storm system. Let's go through tonight. In fact, we're going to stop it right here at midnight tonight. It's making its way into the valley. Look at the heavy rainfall along the coast as well. Now, we're going to stop here because, again, the whole point of this first part of the forecast is to get you out the door for today. If you've got plans over the weekend, stick around because we are going to be looking at more details on the storm system as it moves in through tonight and into tomorrow. But look at that today. You're heading out the door. Shorts, sleeves, works, right? It's going to be gorgeous. Now, I've got some partly cloudy skies in there, but that's in advance of the storm. But really, overall, it's sunny this morning. It will be sunny for the first half of the day. But temperature is low, even some mid-80s for today. And for, that's the valley, of course, in the mountains, 60s and even some 70s in there, low 60s along the coast. Now, I do expect, as I mentioned, you saw that on Futurecast, Del Norte, Northern Humboldt County, some showers later on this afternoon and evening. Let's take a look at that seven-day outlook thunderstorms. Yes, we've got heavy rainfall coming in tonight and then thunderstorms coming in tomorrow afternoon for everyone in the valley. But then it's done. But look at the temperatures. 82 today, 60. I think some of us may struggle to get out of the 50s, if at all, tomorrow. Like Red Bluff with a high of 59 on May 4th. Are you kidding me? <laughs> temperature is increasing a little bit but still cool on sunday and then a big increase going into next week now we take a look at the seven day outlook for the coast inland and weaver now here's what i want to mention you see the showers in there for sunday monday don't worry about it it's not going to be a big deal but just note that if you're in that area don't be surprised if you run into a stray shower both of those days but don't count on being much and then of course here you can see Siskiyou, uh, Modoc, and Susanville. Same story with Sunday, Monday with that rain. Uh, and then you can see on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we see temperatures begin to increase a bit. Want to remind you, if you want to keep up to what's going on here and if you want to really know what's going on, 
Here's what you can expect. Heavy rain at times, especially tonight, tomorrow morning. Shop, snow levels will be dropping, leading to chain requirements on mountain highways. I've already got a question here from Lori about Cedar Pass. We're going to be talking about that. Potential for thunderstorms with heavy rain, lightning, and possible hail. I actually had someone asking yesterday, is there going to be hail? There's a very good chance. When we've got thunderstorms this time of the year especially, hail is a very good possibility. Gusty winds may also lead to, am I saying it on May 4th? Blowing snow today is May 3rd, but for May 4th, blowing snow, blowing snow in May, it's a possibility. All right, so if you have plans over the weekend and you want to know what's going on right at that moment, I want you to check out the Free Weather NorCal app. Download it today so you can be prepared for this weekend's storm. It will give you all the information you need. You can check the latest video forecast. You can watch the 24-hour streaming channel. You can check each of the six neighborhoods that we cover here at Weather NorCal. You can, and of course, you can also take a look at the radar. What's going on with the latest radar. Also, this is another good source of information, the 24-hour streaming channel. If you really want to stay on top of it, maybe just put it on in the background and you'll see all the different areas and different types of uh, different weather uh, that we're covering here. Uh, with the six different neighborhoods, the video update that I do, the latest one will be available on the 24-hour streaming channel, and not to mention some of the, the cool special programming as well. So yeah, definitely very, very interesting, and I want you to check out some of those different resources you have to get your weather. There's a look at Main Street Chico, Main Street Chico this morning on Highway 32. There's Highway 99 at Neal Road. Ah, oh, yes. I mean, again, you'll look at the weather out there right now, and you say, Really? There's a storm coming our way? Yeah, yeah, there is. And it's gonna be an impactful storm as well. I mean, is this gonna be Armageddon? No, but it is gonna have an impact. Look at the dam, uh, Lake Orville. By the way, Lake Orville now about three feet from the crest. That thing's almost 100% full, it's almost overflowing. So yeah, they gotta get some flow out of there, uh, out of the, uh, the lake, but very, very impressive when it comes to rain there. Hey, today is Friday. We've got our pet of the week. I had a chance to meet Shakira. And now you also will have a chance to meet Shakira as well. Hello everyone, Mike Kruger from Weather NorCal. This is Pet of the Week, sponsored by Cottonwood Small Animal and Large Animal Clinic. Uh, we have with us today, of course, Katrina from Hayden <laughs> Humane Society. And this is no, in no relation to a singer, but Shakira, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. So we're calling her Shakira. She is a cutie. And uh, so, what kind of breed are we talking here, you think? We have her as a poodle mix. Poodle mix. Um, we're not like, quite sure what else, but and it might be hard to see on camera, but she definitely has the very curly fur. She got a haircut when she came in, so it's pretty short right now, but I mean, perfect for summer. Yeah. Um, but she's only about a year old, so she's definitely very young. Um, she's very, very, very playful. She loves playing, yes. she loves toys. And she definitely kind of has like springs for legs. Oh, like that. <laughs> she can jump. <laughs> so she And get tangled up. Yes. So she's definitely a very energetic, very fun loving girl. Um, but luckily she's only about 20 pounds. So I think she'd be a good fit for anyone who is looking for a slightly smaller dog. Um, but she's definitely not a lap dog. So if you're looking for, you know, a couch potato kind of dog that is not Shakira, she wants to yeah, go she, out and, and play. And she's young. So mm -hmm. A lot of times they get older and they mellow out a little bit. Exactly. And so that may happen because we've got a big lap dog. She was super hyper to begin with. Uh, so yeah, it just, uh, just all depends. Now, if someone wanted to adopt <laughs> Shakira, how much would it cost? Um, so actually right now we're doing our Bissell Empty the Shelter event. Ooh. So from now until May 15th, um, all adoption fees are sponsored. Fan so free? So free, except um, a license fee does apply if you live within the county. Who can we thank for that? Who's the sponsor? Uh, Bissell Pet Foundation. Oh, that is fantastic. Well, yeah. thank you, Bissell. And of course, uh, we can't forget about our sponsor of Pet of the Week as well, Cottonwood <laughs> Small Animal Clinic. But so if you are interested in Shakira or any of the animals they have here, sponsorship. It's all sponsored, so that's all good too. You have through the 15th of this month, so be sure to check that out. And of course, we will see you next week for Pet of the Week. Once again, I want to thank Cottonwood Veterinary Clinic and Small Animal Clinic for their sponsorship of Pet of the Week. Of course, the animal family segment in general. If you want to check out Pet of the Week, you missed a, you know coffee with Kruger in the morning, you can always go to the website and just click on the Animal Family segment, and you'll not only be able to watch the pet of the week, but you'll also be able to watch the other segment that they sponsor, which is the Turtle Bay Wonderful World of Animals. Be sure to check that out. 
Again, want to thank them for their sponsorship. Checking in with some of the some some of you this morning. Uh, we've got uh, several people said, of course, saying good morning. Dean, we've got Elaine, we've got Lori asking what Cedar Pass will be like on Saturday. Saturday could see the potential for some snow on Cedar Pass. Um, I think especially Saturday evening, Saturday night. Um, but by then, a lot of the heavier activity will be gone. But yeah, I mean, Cedar Pass, I think, will be impacted by this. I mean, that's a pretty high pass up there. Uh, good morning from Bill and Ruth. Curtis saying good morning. And of course, he enjoys watching the broadcast every morning, the science and all the good stuff behind us. So uh, love that. Thank you. Kathy saying good morning as well. Well, what do you say we get right into it? Because again, there is going to be a lot to talk about and you're going to want to pay close attention to the forecast here because uh, we've got a storm system heading our way. And again, this is not an, I don't, you you know me, you know my slogan here. no hype, just weather. So I'm not hyping the storm here. I'm not, you know, talking about Armageddon. But especially for this time of the year, a lot of us can get caught off guard because we've been enjoying this beautiful weather all week long. Today's going to be gorgeous. And if you're not paying attention to the weather, boom, we got these storms coming through. You're trying to travel in the mountains and now you're you're stuck in the in the mountains, right? So again, we're, we're probably going to see chain requirements and all that good stuff. But again, let's get, we'll, we'll get into all of that here. So let's get you right to it. We're going to start off, of course, by mentioning our sponsor, Wind River Resort and Casino, where you can enjoy friendly service, a wide variety of specials and promotions, plus all of your favorite slots and table games. Once again, I want to thank Wind River for their support of Weather NorCal and, of course, Coffee with Kruger. Right now, of course, we're looking at temperatures as we typically expect this time of the year, although a little bit gusty and winds are blowing a bit out at the Reading Airport, keeping it close to 60 Otherwise, calmer winds in the south, keeping those temperatures upper 40s to around 50. Much colder in the mountains. We're 28 degrees for Alturas, 37 out in Susanville. We've got low to mid 40s right now out along the coast. All right, here's your weather headlines. Warming trend peaks today. Big temperature drop. I mean, big. Especially, we're talking over 20 degree drop in some cases. Rain, thunderstorms this weekend, mountain snow. But after we get through this weekend, and really Saturday, Saturday is the main event. Once we get through it, drier and warmer going into next week and a lot warmer. All right, so here's what to expect. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but we're just going to kind of start things off with this, right? Friday night, that's tonight through Sunday morning. So again, it's mainly going to be a tonight and tomorrow event, right? Heavy rain at times, especially in the morning hours. And the timing of that will depend on where you are, which will take a closer look at that. Snow levels dropping, which will lead to chain requirements on some of those mountain passes. Now, as you get down to say, you know, 3,000 feet, that's going to be borderline. You have to probably go above that before you start seeing that potential for chain requirements. Keep in mind, the road temperatures right now are actually pretty warm. So we've got to cool those road temperatures down before we start seeing the snow accumulating on those roadways. Potential for thunderstorms, heavy rain, lightning, possible hail, gusty winds, right? And speaking of that, overall, there are going to be some gusty winds, especially on the cold front as it passes through. So a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about with the storm system. So there you can see kind of the big swirling area of low pressure. You've got the cold front associated with that. We're already starting to see some rain showing up on the radar, at least to our north, but eventually we'll see that. This is one of those moments, you know, listen, I don't like to brag a whole lot, and I don't, but yesterday we were looking at this exact same map for this exact same day. And yesterday there was only this one little sliver right here showing the chance for thunderstorms, the green, okay? It didn't have any of this other green here. I said yesterday, I bet by tomorrow, most, if not all of Northern California will be covered in green. There we are. We've got chances for thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Let's take a look at Futurecast, walk you through the timing. All right, so here we are 5 p.m. today. The clouds will be on the increase. So you see the partly cloudy skies for some of us in the valley. That's because later this afternoon, the clouds move in in advance of the storm system. But here's the cold front. Here's the rain associated with it. You know, Futurecast has been picking up on in advance of it, some, some activity trying to develop here. But really, for the most part, it'll be dry for almost everyone through the day. Del Norte County later this afternoon, evening, showers, maybe even into uh, northern Humboldt County. Now, 10 o'clock tonight, I've got snow levels starting off 6,000 plus feet. There's the main band of rain along the cold front. We may see some showers by tonight uh, in parts of the valley. This is not going to be anything significant. It's really dry out there right now. So we got to saturate the atmosphere before we start seeing any of that decent rain come in. So most likely a lot of the leading showers that we see may evaporate before reaching the ground. But 
we do start to see that push through. So I'm just going to take you all the way through 5 a.m. So basically from about midnight tonight through the morning hours, you're talking about steady rainfall, moderate to even heavy rainfall at times. Along the cold front, you're talking gusty winds. I mean, look at this. Look at all of this rainfall here. So tonight, you know, starting as early as, say, you know, eight, nine o'clock tonight, the coast seeing that rain beginning to get steady and heavy. But even through 5 a.m., still that steady uh, light and heavy rainfall, right? By midnight through 5 a.m., we're still seeing some of that heavy rainfall for the valley. But you head to the extreme east, we're not seeing the rain just yet. But places like Bernie, Alturas just getting in on some of the rain, Susanville, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, still a slight chance for some of the showers. Snow levels are going to be at this point between 3,000 and 3,500 feet. The cold front by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, it's off to our east. It's gone. It's out of here. But we still got cold and unstable air behind it. So at 10 a.m. through the mid-morning hours, heaviest rainfall and not to mention snow will be in the eastern mountains. Now again, snow levels between 3,000 and 3,500 feet. Uh, chain requirements? I think they're going to start to be a possibility over some of those higher mountain passes east of I-5. There's Cedar Pass. Look at this snow. All right, so again, you're asking about Cedar Pass. Even tomorrow morning, you might be dealing with it, okay? So we're on the back edge. So by 10 a.m., we're on the back edge of that rain for the valley. And now you can see here at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Again, we're still in the morning hours. There's the snow and there's the showers and thunderstorms. So we look at the snow and you can see... Yeah, I mean, there might be a little bit here uh, on Highway 299. We'll have to kind of watch that. All right, here we are Saturday, tomorrow, 2 p.m. This is when we start to see the cold and unstable air moving in, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Heavy rainfall at times, as we mentioned with those thunderstorms, possibility for some hail, lightning, and gusty winds. But now we're looking at more in the way of scattered activity. We're not looking at the widespread, steady rainfall for several hours. That's done with at this point. We go into Saturday at 6 p.m. Now it's beginning to kind of start to clear out. I th still think even at 6 p.m. there could be a stray shower, a stray thunderstorm on Saturday, but now we're looking at the snow in the mountains. Again, all day Saturday, keep a close eye on those chain requirements because most likely, especially east of I-5, there will be chain requirements. How about I-5? Maybe, maybe out towards, uh, you head north of Mount Shasta, around Weed, up uh, uh, towards Aiden Pass on I-5. Uh, not to mention Highway 89, Snowman Summit, right? Uh, but, you know, Highway 299 in the morning tomorrow, keep a close eye on it. It could happen. We'll see. And then Highway 36 possibility, as I mentioned, especially east of I-5. All right, now we're at Saturday, 11 p.m. We're getting through the day on Saturday. Now things are starting to taper off, but still some snow out there. Here's Sunday morning. Look at that. Not a whole lot going on, but I think the coast and all of the mountains will see a chance for showers and snow flurries throughout the day, but it will be dry in the valley throughout the day. Uh, you know, it's showing some sprinkles trying to come in. If you see a stray sprinkle in North Reading, all right, maybe. But overall, it's going to be a dry day. And it's not going to be a lot going on on Sunday. All right, the forecast model, I tell you what, as we get closer to the storm system, we've been adding more and more to these rainfall total, estimated, estimated rainfall totals. I think on average, an inch of rainfall, give or take, for the valley. That's what it's looking like at this point. So some good rain heading our way. And again, most of that's going to be coming late tonight, early tomorrow morning. So between the hours of midnight and say eight o'clock in the morning, that's when the bulk of this is coming in. Now we'll probably tack on a little bit more to those totals as we go through the afternoon for some areas if you get caught under a thunderstorm, right? Uh, and then of course you see the heavier rainfall along the coast, no surprises there. And you know, here's the thing. All winter long, for the most part, we really haven't seen much with these storms off to the northern, northern Siskiyou County, Modoc, Lassen, and even Plumas County. We haven't seen much. But this storm system is going to bring some decent rainfall for all of the higher elevations as well. All right, let's talk about the snow now. Now, I want you to take a look at this and go, all right, we're not going to see accumulating snow in Weaverville or Hayfork. Just take that off, off the table right now. That's not going to happen. A mix, probably not either, but don't be surprised, especially early tomorrow morning. Mount Shasta City, you might see some light accumulation for a brief period of time. Dunsmuir, no, I don't think it's going to happen. Etna, probably not. Wairika, probably not either. Bernie, yes, maybe some light accumulation. Maybe Shingletown, some light accumulation. Viola, 
probably more than two to four inches of snow. Fall River Mills, maybe some light accumulation and maybe some light accumulation for Alturas as well. How about Chester? Yeah, I think you could see probably more than what you're seeing here, maybe a couple of inches. Uh, Quincy, Susanville, Portola, same situation. I think we could be looking at uh, some, some accumulated snow there. And the Sierra, I mean, you go above six, 7,000 feet. In the Sierra, down to the south, you're talking upwards of 10 inches of snow. That'll all melt very quickly um, by Sunday. So here are the storm impacts. You're asking about Cedar Pass, there it is. Okay, so you see the yellow and, and uh, orange, that's minor to moderate. Typical spots, right? The higher mountain passes is where we're gonna see the bigger impacts. Highway 299, it's not showing much of an impact for tomorrow. That said, I want you to still be aware of Buckhorn Summit. I want you to be aware of Oregon Mountain and Berry Summit tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow, okay? Just, just check it before heading out uh, because Mother Nature always has a way of surprising us, especially with a storm like this, right? Of course, we're not surprised about it. I've been telling you about it all week long, but Sunday, yeah, conditions looks like they will improve but there still may be some snow flurries out there through the day on Sunday. So that could create some minor issues. Winds, all right, so you see the cold front kind of, today it's not gonna be an issue. A little breezy, especially for the valley. As the cold front passes through tomorrow morning, gusty winds, right, even for the Eastern mountains. Then as the thunderstorms develop Saturday afternoon, we could see more uh, gusty winds as well. And then going into your Sunday, looks like we're gonna be looking at calmer winds across the board. So that cold front will produce some pretty gusty winds. So here's the big picture. All right, we're not gonna go through too much timing, but just kind of show you the storm. So there's Saturday, the colder air, there's the rain, there's the snow I was talking about. By Sunday, it's off to the east and most of it's gone. But again, uh, kind of on the back side of that and these disturbances kind of coming in the flow, there could still be some of that activity in the mountains. Check this out on Monday though. We've got a system off to our north. This is uh, getting fairly aggressive. Now, I think it'll be dry in the valley, but I think all of the mountains and even the coast could see a chance for showers. And snow levels at this point, you're above five, 6,000 feet, so that's not a concern. But we're also seeing all these tightly packed white lines. Those are the isobars when they're tightly packed. We talk about the winds, right? So I think we'll see some gusty winds to start off the work week going into Tuesday and maybe even into Wednesday. But you can see this storm system off to the east. You can see the area of high pressure. This is building in for next week. So we're gonna be going from, and this is where things get interesting because I think for the first time I've seen in the long range, we may see 90 degrees for the first time this year, late next week into that next weekend. So what's interesting is we're gonna go from upper 50s to low 60s in the valley on Saturday even into Sunday to probably close to, if not above 90 degrees toward the end of next week. We'll see. We'll see what happens with those temperatures, but you can see we do have the drier than normal conditions once we get past this storm and warmer than normal conditions also once we get into next week and past this storm that's coming through this weekend. There you can see, of course, those wave heights for today, not an issue. Tomorrow, they begin to kind of pick up a little bit. I think we'll be looking at some small correct advisories uh, for this evening and into tomorrow. So we look at our marine forecast, south winds at 5 to 15 knots. Some fog, some showers out there, and those showers developing late in the day today. And of course, as I mentioned, those winds picking up. Here's your detailed neighborhood by neighborhood forecast for Trinity County. There, of course, you can see uh, we are looking at those temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Now, again, I talk about uh, all of the mountains and the coast. Sunday, Monday, that chance. Nothing to write home about, nothing to be concerned about. Again, the main event will be tomorrow. I mean, that's pretty much what I've been kind of uh, talking about here over the last several minutes here. But there you can see, feels like an eternity. I've just been talking and talking. 65 for Honeydew, 70 out Miranda, and Red Crest about 66. And there you can see out towards Ferndale, 61. 63 out in Fortuna and 62 degrees for Rio Dell. Take you up north, Trinidad about 63, 73 in Hoopa, and 74 in Willow Creek. So again, yeah, the storm is coming, but many of us are going to see the warmest temperatures we've seen so far for the week. I mean, look at Siskiyou County. Horse Creek, 74, 69 for Wairika, 70 in Grenada and Montague, 70 out towards Hornbrook. We take out to Scott Valley, close to 70 there as well. The clouds will be on the increase, especially as we go into the afternoon. Central Eastern Siskiyou County, Mount Shasta, you're up to 70, 72 degrees out in Dunsmere, McLeod about 71. Modoc County, we're in the mid 60s, 64 degrees for Newell. Uh, looks like Alturas about 66 as well as likely. 
Your Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast, seeing some 70s in there as well. Burning about 70, 73 degrees for Montgomery Creek. Shingletown, 70. Uh, out towards Viola, though cooler at about 64. We take out to Lake Almanor, Lassen Park. It's getting cooler as well. Look at that, a high of 36 out at Lassen Park tomorrow. 34 on Sunday. But then we're back up in the 40s and 50s as we go through next week. Here's your eastern mountains to the south. Paradise, you'll see the chance for thunderstorms for tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. With a high today, though, of 74 degrees. Here's a look at your valley neighborhood forecast brought to you by NorCal Tractor. Again, warmer temperatures. Some of the warmest we've seen so far for the week. 82 out in Red Bluff, uh, 82 for Los Molinos and Oroville, about 82. Look for a high of 80 out in Palisadro. Uh, Reading about 82, 75 for Lakehead, and 76 degrees in Whiskey Town. So there's your 7-day outlook for Reading. Whew, showers, thunderstorms for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the big day. That's the day, folks. That's the day. And then, of course, Sunday, we dry things out. We're back up to 70 on Monday, 81 on Thursday. And if we're going to Friday of next week, Friday uh, could be looking at some upper 80s. Uh, and then maybe um, a week from this upcoming weekend, the potential for some 90 degree readings. Yeah, 90 for the first time this year. Could get interesting. Let's see what's going on here. See if any uh, any comments or questions since I've been doing this update. How is Siskiyou Summit for Saturday? Saturday, Siskiyou Summit, probably could see some chain requirements. It's not out of the question. I mean, it's going to be heavy in the morning. It's going to be very heavy in the morning. Um, and especially when you're talking heavy snowfall, even if it's too warm, you can come down very quickly um, and stay in the form of snow. However, if it's too warm at the surface, it'll have a hard time. Here's the bottom line. Here, Everyone's going to be concerned about snow and travel and going over the pa passes. This time of the year is going to be more difficult for us to see major problems, okay? It is going to be more difficult for that to happen because we've got road, uh, we've got warm roads. Uh, it's going to take time for us to cool those roads down. Um, and, you know, we'll have to kind of wait and see what happens with that. But here, here's my bottom line, and here's what I want you to do. In fact, I'm going to show you where to go. Um, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to do. I'm going to take you to the website. You go to weathernorcal.com. You can also access this from the app. You can also access uh, access it from your phone, uh, from the internet as well. I want you to scroll down. See where it says road conditions. Okay, with one with uh, one of our partnerships with uh, Caltrans District Two, by the way. Click on that. Okay, you got a video here to kind of give you some advice on traveling for the summer or kind of transitioning to the summer, but we have winter stuff to talk about. So quick, first and foremost, if you want to check out the latest uh, chain requirements, click on that. I'm going to click on it right now. No chain requirements now, but that'll change, right? All right. So below that, this is, this is one of my favorite parts. I have taken some of the more popular um, spots with Caltrans cameras and I put them right here at a quick glance. I call it the I-5 quick glance at road conditions. So you will be able to see real quickly where the snow is and where it's accumulating on the roads. Then of course you can also very quickly glance at quick map. And there you have it. You're doing that. So I, I would like to recommend that you check that out and you can also check that out on the app. If you go to the app, click on road conditions, you get all the same stuff there. You can take a look, quick glance at those uh, cameras. Uh, that's what I would recommend for everyone who has to travel this weekend. Start off at weathernorcal.com, go to the road conditions section, and you'll have all the information you need right there. Uh, oh, I get my notification late daily. Good Friday morning. Um, uh, my poor garden is so confused. Uh, castle area this morning at 3,200 feet. 29. Oof. How about Klamath tomorrow? Well, I mean, they're going to be even colder up there. I, what's the what's the elevation of Klamath? I don't know, but if it's if it's if it's you know three thousand feet or higher, Klamath could be looking at some snow. Uh, last weekend to use weather. To, uh, last weekend to use weather to grow your couch potatoes for a bit. <laughs> Um, app equals all info needed. One stop shop for all. Well, thank you, Lisa. And I agree. It is a one stop shop. It's everything you need right there from the app. You know, you got all these different weather apps, but sometimes there are just a few things kind of outside of what you what might be considered weather, like road conditions. Um, when we get into the fire season, you'll have the fire conditions there as well, uh, all right there from the app. 24 hour streaming channel from the app. 
Um, great stuff. I highly recommend it. And of course, Lisa recommends it as well. By the way, everyone watching now, I got you. In my hand right here, I have got Reading Rodeo tickets. Starting next week, I'm still ironing out the details of how we're going to do this, but I'm going to be doing a giveaway for these tickets. Okay. Um, May 15th through the 18th is when the uh, rodeo is. So I'd like to get these tickets given away next week through the week. So I want you to check in with uh, Coffee with Kruger in the morning for details on that, on uh, the details. Of it. Here's the thing. I don't want it to be a, strictly a Facebook type of thing where you got to, you know, share and like. I'll probably include that, but it might be more of like email me, tell me why you should, should get the tickets and we'll do a random drawing. Uh, well, maybe do something like that uh, because everyone, for the most part, has access to email and we'll kind of do it that way. Uh, Margaret Robertson saying good morning, Mike. We appreciate your NorCal weather. Well, I appreciate you and I appreciate all of you for your support. Ooh, what's going on? Why is my chat gone? What happened to my chat? Mm -hmm. Getting a little, a little funky there. All right. Uh, good. So that's what I want you to do. Before we leave, I'm going to give this map. So for those of you that are just tuning in, first of all, I recommend, and this is, I'm, we're going to take you to the website again. Uh, let's go back to road conditions. Let's go back to the home page. Home. All right. So you, you, you woke up. You go, oh, I just missed coffee with Kruger. But I want to get his detailed forecast. Not a problem. Because once I'm done, you can go right here. You see where it says coffee with Kruger? Weekday mornings at 7. Click on that. Again, click on it there. I, I guess I didn't click it properly. And yeah, it might be some weird screenshot of me, but of course, as you know, it's sponsored by Wind River Resort and Casino. There you can click on the latest uh, recording. So once I'm done recording this, once I'm done with this, I'm recording it as we speak. Once I'm done, I then immediately take that video and upload it to YouTube and it goes right to the website. And then you'll be able to watch there and you'll be able to get all of the information you need there, which will be great for number one, getting the latest weather and number two, especially for next week, when we're giving away these rodeo tickets. So that is going to do it today, folks. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. Uh, and I want you to stay safe out there uh, because again, this is gonna be quite a storm. Tell all your friends about what's going on and where they can get the best information. Uh, meteorologist Brian Wilson will of course uh, update you with the information. If need be, I will do a special edition of Coffee with Kruger tomorrow morning, if need be. If not, um, you know, just updating on social media and the works, but um, meteorologist Brian Wilson will have the timeline for you of the storm and what to expect. So, you know, of course, you can always keep checking with the video updates there as well. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the cameras out here. Well, let's start off by taking a look at Elk Country just north of Trinidad. This is my camera for Weather NorCal, the first one I've ever had, and it has been working beautifully. And it looks like it's dry up there this morning, but that will be changing. All right, again, keep it to weathernorcal.com. Check the latest on the app. You can watch the 24-hour streaming channel to keep updated with everything that's going on. And of course, you've got Facebook, YouTube, the works. We will see you, if not, tomorrow morning, Monday morning on Coffee with Kruger. Keep checking in with Brian Wilson over the weekend for the latest on the weather. Have a great day, everyone, and have a happy and safe weekend.
Thank you.